Hello, how lovely to see you and uh, how great that we're here. And do type in uh, to say where you are. A, so I know that I'm not talking to nobody, to use a double negative, and B, so that I can, uh, we can start to see each other gradually, this lovely network of people around the world starting to build. So if you, um, if you type in where, where you're from as well, Louisville, and Richard Davis, hello there, Richard, and Heather, great Los Angeles. So gradually type in where you're from. And that's a way really, isn't it, of introducing yourself into the group. This is what we do when we gather together in a group. You say, hi, I'm John from Kentucky, and I'm Louise from Louisiana. So, and while you're doing that, and, and I glance at it every so often and, and, and see new, new faces and old faces there, which is great. From the land of the Moomins, Finland, how wonderful. Uh, North Texas, Nova Scotia, Merseyside, Saskatchewan, lovely. And British Columbia, that's great. So as, as everybody gathers, I'll, I'll start to talk. You know, the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been talking about solitude and about the upsides of that and the downsides of it. And uh, the particular angle we've taken in these conversations that it has interested me is seeing what psychology can tell us and seeing what spiritual teachings or the spiritual traditions can tell us. And that's what really fascinates me is when you take psychological understanding and you take spiritual understanding and you put them together. And I think there's something wonderful that happens in that. And I think we can be as universal and as eclectic as we like. Any kind of psychology, behavioral, Freudian, Jungian, it doesn't matter if it's helpful. Likewise with spirituality. It doesn't matter to me where it's coming from, which tradition it's coming from. Uh, although I have a particular interest in Druidry and in nature-based spirituality, because then that's really down to earth. And I think it's <clears throat> what's needed in the world today. And so let's, let's continue with this process of taking these two lenses or approaches and seeing if we can look at, uh, ooh, there are lots of little hearts flying across the screen. How lovely, thank you. Um, let's take a look at another um, issue uh, and see what we can do with that. And the issue I'm going to take today is the question of sensitivity. Now, if you think about sensitivity, it's something that a lot of us who are drawn to the spiritual path will wish to develop. We want to become more sensitive to our, our inner selves, our soul, more sensitive to the other world, more sensitive to nature, more sensitive to, to those of our friends who've died and gone to the other realms. We want to be more sensitive. And then there are some, I get, and if, if, that, if that applies to you, do type in yes one, just type in yes one. If you're drawn to spirituality because you want to develop your sensitivity. And if you type yes one in, you'll see, see why I'm asking for the one afterwards in a minute. And it'll be really interesting to see. Yes one says Apana Talwoka. And uh, yes, Rebecca Boardman's ahead of me here. Uh, okay, so now, so we're getting yes ones coming in. Yes ones. We want to, I, you know, I certainly have been drawn to spirituality because I want to be more sensitive to the subtle realms and to subtle energies and so on. There are those of us now who feel that we're super sensitive already to the other worlds. We, there are people you meet who are naturally mediumistic, who, who are, they feel as if they're in touch with the spirits all the time. Uh, type yes to, and it doesn't have to be exclusive. You can be both. You can be a yes one type and a yes two type. Are you somebody who feels that you're super sensitive to, to the spiritual? And if you are, type in yes to. We've got masses of yes ones, which is just lovely. And now we've got a yes to coming up from Madzi Hanley and, um, and Boardman, Rebecca, Vedi, Ahan, Lorraine Watts. Yes, so we've got Melissa. Yes, lots of yes twos coming up. Now I'm going to introduce a third category, which is you feel that you're really sensitive, you're super sensitive, 
but not necessarily to the spiritual world. Maybe you are to the spiritual world, but also to the everyday world. And by this, I mean you're super sensitive to sounds. You find it really hard to be in loud or noisy places. You are super sensitive to smells, to what you see. You feel very empathic, and so you're super sensitive to people's emotions, atmospheres in rooms when you come into them. It's like you can pick up on what people are feeling or thinking or what their needs are. Um, maybe you, you avoid watching violent films. Uh, if somebody is rude to you, it really hurts for a long time and it takes you days and days to get over slights and insults. Um, you're a yes three, maybe. So um, Natasha is one, two, and three, hooray. Uh, and uh, so so so's Mark. So, so yes, so Cheryl Lane's saying, saying empath, which is a word that some people use for this type of person. So yes, quite a few threes coming up. Now, when I was talking to Stephanie about it, she said, well, what about the category that you're in, Philip, which is the insensitive, <laughs> the highly insensitive person, uh, because there are highly sensitive people. And I must admit, I Googled it. I thought maybe, maybe there is a category of people who are highly insensitive. And there's a way in which I sometimes am. I think we, you know, we're a tremendous mix, aren't we, in many ways. And I Googled highly insensitive people, couldn't find anything. No research has done on it. So if you're a research psychologist looking for a project, see if you can identify that trait. But now here's the interesting thing. It seems that psychologists have identified a trait of high sensitivity. People who exhibit the sensitivities that I mentioned, very sensitive, they get easily hurt, they can't stand loud noises, they uh, find it difficult to be in chaotic environments, they need lots of alone time, um, they avoid violence, films, and so on and so on. Uh, they're very empathic. And this category of person has been defined now. And the interesting thing is, that they've done quite a lot of research over the last 20 years. And they've found that there are physiological correlates. So the suggestion is that there are people, and it's called sensory processing sensitivity. And there's a suggestion that the sensory mechanism is highly sensitized and processes sensory data in a different way to other types of people. And in the research that's been done, um, they found that about 20% of the population fall into this category. 20% of the population, if we're to believe these psychologists, fall into a category where they have sensory processing sensitivity. Now, I think that's really interesting. And it, it, to me, it makes sense. If you think about the nervous system, the beauty, the complexity of it, it makes sense that you would have a spectrum of sensitivity with some people having nervous systems that, that are relatively insensitive and then other people having nervous systems that are highly sensitive. And they've done experiments with animals too and found that the same thing applies to animals. And of course, that's really interesting because you're not getting um, uh, psychological bias getting in the way. You can go to a um, you can go to a site, and I'll give you the link uh, with the with the blog post that goes with this, where you can do a self test, an online self test. Remember the limitations of online self tests, but it's quite interesting to do. And at first glance, the questions that they're asking you seem pretty simplistic. You know, do you find loud noises a drag uh, or, or difficult or intolerable? Um, are you very sensitive to caffeine, uh, to certain kinds of foods, and so on and so on? But gradually, it's building up a picture. And if you get above a certain score, which it tells you straight away, you might consider yourself as a highly sensitive person. I watched a film about this. Again, I'll give you the trailer in the, in the blog post, which um, had in it um, Elaine Aaron, who's the psychologist who developed the theory and who wrote a book called The Highly Sensitive Person, which obviously touched a chord with many people because it sold over a million copies. And she's made a film and she's made it with a couple of people, including Alanis Morissette, who is a Canadian singer who I respect very much. I think she's fantastic. 
and a very interesting person. And she's written a song. She tell in the film she tells a story about how, at the sort of height of her career, where you know life was kind of crazy as it is for pop stars, there were ten people in the house. It was just madness, and she crawled into a cupboard, and kind of a prayer came to her, uh, which she wrote down, and it they became the lyrics of a song. And I've pasted into the blog post that song uh, with the lyrics showing, and it's very touching. I think it's a very very touching. Um, thing because here we now get on to, to to our perspective, the perspective I'd like to suggest that you know we, we can explore together, which is psychology and spirituality. So what does psychology tell us? Well, it tells us that this category of people exists, and it suggests ways in which we can relate to that because it's a large category. One in five people uh, may well fall into this, and it suggests ways that you can relate to yourself. Or to other people, if you're not an HSP yourself, highly sensitive person yourself, maybe your child is, maybe your husband or wife is. Split exactly 50-50, the research shows, between men and women. Uh, it's not as simple as introverts being HSPs and extroverts not, because about 30% of HSPs are extroverted. So it seems to be a character, uh, a, a, a cluster in itself, a trait in itself. And um, one of the biggest, I think, helps that I understand that psychology can provide is reframing this, is not seeing yourself as abnormal. You know, reframing is a fantastic tool in psychology where you, you know, so much of the way we feel and think is governed by how we think about something. If we change the way we frame it, the, the perspective that we're looking at it from, Everything changes, as it does when we change perspective. And so, number one, you don't tell yourself that you or your kid or partner is abnormal. It's not abnormal. It's very common. It's uh, not a failing. It's not a weakness. Uh, it's actually something that brings with it, with this sensitivity, comes aesthetic appreciation, comes creativity, the potential for great creativity. And like every character type, you just need to recognize that it's your character type. And then, if necessary, adjust your lifestyle, the way you live your life accordingly, which is what Alanis Morissette in the film explains that, that she's done. And so this, this reframing is hugely important. And for that reason, I've also popped in the blog post a TED talk by a woman who identifies as highly sensitive. And she talks about it and then talks about how, uh, how you can best relate to the world and to yourself. OK, that's the psychological. Now for the spiritual angle on it. What would spirituality say? What would that perspective say to us? Well, the first thing uh, it says is, um, and now I've completely gone blank. My mind's <laughs> got a complete blank. I've been thinking about this all day and working on it. Let me consult my notes. Um, it's, it's, yes, of course. Highly sensitive people also are drawn to spirituality. My point at the beginning is that some of us are drawn to increase our sensitivity, but many of us are drawn to spirituality because we're already sensitive. We already have a different uh, point of view about life. And, and so the tools of spiritual tradition which are retreats and meditation, an appreciation of silence, of depth, uh, become huge allies for the highly sensitive person. One of the characteristics of an HSP that I haven't mentioned is their depth of processing. It seems that they uh, seem to take a long time processing information. So they have a longer reaction time. They have strong reactivity to stimulation, but they process the material for a long time. So they can appear to be people who are indecisive or who take a long time to pitch in with their thoughts and feelings. So once you realize that, you can take these spiritual tools of retreats in particular and meditation and use them to your advantage. So retreats are, are 
don't have to be huge deals where you book up on a retreat and go off on one and and take time out you can give yourself mini retreats every time in a way you just close your eyes and let go of the stimulus of the outside world you are if you like taking a micro retreat every time you meditate you're taking a, a micro retreat and you can give yourself a mini retreat of just an hour or two uh, at home where you close the door in your room or you just tuck yourself under the duvet and go into the darkness and just reconnect with your inner self but you can also of course use the technique of meditation to uh, regain that strength and so now I'm going to suggest that we meditate together and let's do one that is I think helpful if you are feeling highly sensitive or if you have identified yourself as a highly sensitive person but of course uh, we're all sensitive in different ways and in different uh, levels and so I think it can benefit all of us and so if it feels okay to you it might be easier for you to close your eyes but you don't have to and you also don't have to do the meditation now you can just listen if you like and do it uh, a little bit later when when you want to do uh, that uh, you know when you want to do it but just let's start to connect with ourselves and knowing that although we are just sitting in front of our computer which might be in Berlin or in Brazil or in New Zealand that somehow we're all connected in this big community together which can give a feeling of strength and solidarity but now we're just becoming aware of ourselves and find yourself just in the most beautiful surroundings for many of us we will be familiar with going into the sacred grove but you don't have to do this if the sacred grove is a good and important place for you then go into the sacred grove or sense yourself in the sacred grove but you might be sitting on a beach you might be sitting in a field you might be in your garden you might even be sitting in your sitting room sitting where you are but just allow yourself to come to feeling yourself and then becoming aware of the earth beneath you and you can feel the earth or smell the earth and you sense the stability and the solidity of the earth bringing you a sense of connection of groundedness and you become aware as you breathe in of the sky above you and as you breathe in you breathe in the energy of the sky and the energy of the sky meets the energy of the earth within the center of your being. And imagine now that your hand slips into a little bag that you have by your side in which there are some smooth stones. And you put your hand into the bag and you feel one stone that feels really good to the touch. You can feel it with your thumb and your fingers. And just very slowly and deliberately with all your awareness, you just take this one stone and place it on the ground in front of you. Just very deliberately and consciously, you sense yourself placing the stone on the ground in front of you. You bring your hand back into the bag and you take a second stone. You move your hand forward and then you just swing your hand around right the way around and you place the stone on the ground behind you. Move your hand back and just become aware of the stone behind you 
and the stone in front of you. Put your hand into the bag again. Take another stone and feel how smooth and lovely it feels. Stretch your hand out and slowly and deliberately place the stone to your right on the ground. Move your hand back. Sense the three stones now. And then choose a fourth stone in the bag with your hand. Feel it smooth to the touch. And place it to the left of you on the ground, consciously and deliberately. And now you're aware of the four stones, one in front of you and one behind you, one to the right and one to the left. And now in your own time, place another four stones in between each of those stones, one by one. So you end up sitting in, sitting in a circle of eight stones. So just pick one and place it between two of them and then go around. So now you're sitting in a circle of eight stones. And you're in the center. And you can just let go of your awareness of those eight stones. And just feel comfortable sitting in the silence in the middle of your stone circle the earth beneath you and the sky above you. And you feel blessed by the earth and by the sky. And knowing that you can make this little circle of stones at any time, wherever you are knowing that you can gather a little bag of eight stones and carry them with you if you wish. You finish the meditation by gathering up each of these stones consciously and deliberately, placing them in the little bag. And then you put the palms of your hands on the earth and sense a blessing on the earth, a blessing on the land, a blessing on our lives. And you move your hands up to your heart, both your palms of your hands up to your heart. And you feel the warmth coming from the palms of your hands flowing into your heart. And then slowly, feeling fully present here and now, you open your eyes. And so I hope that meditation was helpful for you. Uh, at some time in, in half an hour or so, I'll have the um, little uh, little uh, blog post put up so you don't have to remember what I've said because there'll be links to the highly sensitive person website which tells you about the book that Elaine Aaron has written there'll be the trailer of the film called sensitive there'll be the music of Alanis Morissette which is rather nice to listen to as a meditation actually 
Um, it's uh, it's lovely to read your um, your comments coming. In. Uh, Maria Maria Lyon says the depth of the dark side of highly sensitive person is also the door to spirituality, and that's a very good point because of course uh, with highly sensitive people uh, there are all sorts of positives and benefits, but it can also make living in the world very difficult. There's a fantastic quote uh, that's on the blog as well from Krishnamurti who said, who says, um, uh, I can't find it now, uh, you know, that, that for, to be well adjusted in this world cannot be considered a sign of health, basically. It's a very strange and difficult world we live in. So being highly sensitive, uh, brings with it challenges, which is what I believe Marieline was referring to. Um, and, and and thank you for sending these quotes and thank you for sending these little hearts that are flying and little smiley faces that are flying in uh, across the, the across the room, uh, across the screen there. It's lovely. I, I hope you see them too. I don't know if you can, uh, but I see them. Lots of little thumbs and hearts and all the rest of it. Um, all set up for another day. Thank you from Emerald, Australia. That's that's lovely. Um, here, it's very different to Australia right now. Uh, it's very, very cold with little bits of snow falling in uh, in Sussex and, and London. Um, so Iwan is saying, to be honest, I just want to turn off for a couple of days. And that's that's I think what I was saying about um, ab about micro retreats. Think about micro retreats, mini retreats. And then longer retreats. You can have a micro retreat virtually at any time just by going inside and creating conditions. And that's essentially what that meditation was doing. It was just a way of, of helping you have a sense of boundaries because boundaries are an issue if you're sensitive. Uh, people talk about, you know, don't they, um, he's got one less skin or uh, people, people talk about being thick skinned or thin skinned. Oh, she's very thin skinned. And that's a bit how that sensitivity can feel is that you, you've got one skin too few. And so meditations that work with a sense of uh, developing your boundary, whether that's using a wand, casting circles, creating a stone circle, as we did in that meditation, they all help you to feel safe and to have a sense of, of boundaries. So I'm going to fill up this enormous cup with some tea, I'm some more tea, and I'm then going to post up the blog uh, so you can see the links, and I'm going to read your comments. And I'd be really interested to, to know how you experienced the meditation and whether you have any experiences, any insights yourself or experiences from either the psychological perspective or the spiritual perspective on this whole issue of sensitivity. And I think as well is if, if you don't identify as a highly sensitive person, uh, if the stats are right, then four out of uh, five people who are watching won't feel highly sensitive. Uh, it's important that you, I, because I don't think I am a highly sensitive person. I feel I'm sensitive, but not highly sensitive. Um, uh, if you don't identify with them, I think this can help in relation to our relationships with other people. But also it's important just to, to honor our own, uh, the, the, the state of our own nervous systems. So lots of love, uh, have a lovely evening, and uh, I, I look forward to reading your comments. So bye.